Each layer of rock in the cliff behind me is like a page in a history book. And when we read each page of this history book and combine them all into one, we can build up a story of the landscape that formed the rocks, which together make up the Newcastle coal measures underlying the Newcastle region. When we look at each layer of rock, we're reading several characteristics from that rock to build up the story. So we look at the thickness of the rock layer, we look at the shape of the rock layer. Within the layer, we look at the grains, how big they are that make up that rock, what those grains are made of, and then whether or not there are any fossils. And by combining all of these characteristics, we can put together a story that tells us how this rock formed and where it formed. So on top of the cliff to the right is the Nobby's Tuff. It's made of volcanic ash, which would have fallen out of the air and settled onto the plants and vegetation that was living on the landscape at that time. In the cliffs behind me, there are three layers of coal. At the base of the cliffs is the yard coal. In the middle of the cliffs is the Dudley coal and towards the top is the Nobby's coal. Coal forms an environment that has a lot of organic matter and we interpret these to have formed in peaty swamps. So we have a layer where there is water close to the surface, a lot of vegetation growing and dying and building up on the surface of the earth to contribute lots of organic matter to the soil. Organic matter is a key component of coal and it builds up very slowly. In the layers between the coal are the bogey hole formation and the bar beach formation. These units are made up of sandstone, shale and siltstone and the different layers in these units represent different parts of a river system that existed on the landscape in between the coal or the peaty swamps. If you think about the shape of a river, you have a channel that is carving its way through a flat floodplain landscape. Inside the channel, you might have bits of sand that build up within the channel and we call these point bars. And so the sandy layers in the cliff behind me represent deposits of sand from within a river channel. The floodplains themselves are made up of muds and silts and clays that settle out of floodwaters when the river overflows. And so in the cliff behind me, the darker gray layers are made mostly of these muds and silts, and they represent build up of a floodplain over tens of thousands of years. So together, the coal, which forms in the swamp, the sandstone, which forms in a river channel, and the siltstone and the claystone and the mudstone that form from a floodplain build up a picture of a large landscape with many rivers flowing down towards the ocean, uh, migrating side to side over time, with in between the rivers areas of swamp with a lot of vegetation that builds up and dies and decays in place. The landscape at the time consisted of highlands to the north in the New England area and lowlands or ocean to the south in Sydney. So the rivers that were flowing across this landscape were flowing from north to the south and they were bringing a lot of sediment from the north down and depositing it into the ocean or into the basin, into the Sydney basin. So sediments that we see in those units have come from somewhere in the New England area and have traveled a really long way in these rivers to be deposited here. The cliff behind me tells a story of rivers, of floodplains and of vegetated swamps which were blanketed by volcanic ash and then on top of that another river system that had pebbles and gravels which combines to preserve roughly 100,000 years worth of history.